Dear students, today we are going to discuss about the types of bioreactors or types of fermenters. We will discuss about what a fermenter is and different designs or types of fermenters will also be discussed. A bioreactor or a fermenter is a device in which we can cultivate the microorganisms so that the desired product can be obtained. A bioreactor is a containment system which is designed to give the proper environment, the optimum environment for the optimum growth and metabolic activity of the microorganism so that we can achieve the maximum production of the desired product, the desired industrial product. Several different types or designs of bioreactors are available. Each designed in order to suit the particular industrial application. Coming to the first type, it is a stirred tank reactor or continuous stirred tank reactor. It is also known as CSTR. This is a cylindrical vessel with a motor driven central shaft. We can see several agitators or impellers attached onto the central shaft. The rotational motion of the motor maintains a uniform condition throughout the culture media and microorganisms present inside the fermenter. There are baffles. We can see baffles which are plates fitted to the interior side of the vessel wall. They are also aid in the mixing and mass transfer within the fermenter. Generally, there are four to six baffles in each fermenter. Then we can see sparger or aerator through which sterile air is introduced into the fermenter. And there are provisions for pH control, temperature measurement, foam control and cooling jacket, sterilization of the fermenter, etc. The stirred tank bioreactor poses several advantages such as it is able to carry out continuous operation. A good mixing of the contents is possible. There is efficient gas transfer. We can control the temperature and pH efficiently. Generally, this system can be automated so that there is low operating cost and the cleaning of the fermenter after each fermentation is easy. The next type is bubble column reactors. This is also a cylindrical vessel having an aspect ratio of 4 to 6. Here air or gas is introduced at the base or bottom of the fermenter through a sparger. The sparger may be either a perforated pipe or a perforated plate. The introduction of air through this bottom area itself aids in the aeration of the fermenter as well as in the mixing of the contents in the fermenter. The next type of bioreactor is the airlift reactor. Here the fermenter vessel is divided into two interconnected zones. First zone is known as the riser and the second zone is known as the downcomer. In the riser zone, air or gas is pumped into the fermenter which causes an upward movement of the media along with the pumped in gas. In the downcomer zone, the media contents will move downwards and this upward and downward movements of media in the fermenter will result in the dispersion and a uniform situation throughout the fermenter. So there are two types of airlift reactors. First one is internal loop airlift bioreactor or the airlift fermenter with an internal draft tube. Here there is a central draft tube through which the air or gas is pumped. So the draft tube acts as a riser zone where the media will be moving upward and 
in the other parts of the fermenter the media will be going down or the other parts of the fermenter act as the down comer the second type of air lift reactor is the external loop air lift bioreactor it can be seen in the second image it is the air lift fermenter with external draft tube so here the air or gas is introduced into the main chamber of the fermenter where it will go upward along with the media condense and then they will come downwards through an external tube and finally will reach back into the fermenter so in any type either in the internal loop air lift bioreactor or in the external loop air lift bioreactor the upward and downward movements of media will results in a uniform dispersion of media condensed and microorganisms and all other gaseous contents of the fermenter so this air lift bioreactor possesses several advantages since there are no moving parts or agitator etc in this design it requires less maintenance also there is less risk of any defects as a result this type of reactors are can be operated at very low cost the next type of bioreactor is tower reactor tower reactor may be considered as an air lift reactor with larger dimensions here also there is a riser zone and a down comer zone since these are having larger dimensions having higher heights there is a high hydrostatic pressure at the bottom of the fermenter which will increase the solubility of oxygen which is being pumped in at the bottom of the fermenter at the top of the riser there is a reduced pressure which increases the release of gases especially carbon dioxide from the medium so here too the media flows up and down through the riser and down comer and there is efficient mixing of the media contents in fluidized bed bioreactor or fbr the microbial cells or the enzymes will be immobilized onto solid granular materials these small particles will have a tendency to come down and settle at the bottom of the fermenter due to the force of gravity so the feed or the media and the air will be pumped in through the bottom of the fermenter at enough velocities so as to suspend the solid particles in a solution so this upward force of the media and air and the downward movement of the particles will allow uniform particle mixing and temperature control in this system in this system the upward flow of the feed and air will make the particles in solution like in a fluid so the process is also known as fluidization in packed bed bioreactor the cells the microbial cells or the enzymes are immobilized on larger particles so these particles cannot move with the liquid they are either packed or settled in the fermenter over this packed particles a nutrient media will flow continuously so that the media contents will be utilized by the immobilized cells or enzymes which are trapped in the packing material and the products will be released into the fluid the flow of the li liquid may be either upward or downward in the image the first image the flow is from the top to the bottom and the second image the flow is from the bottom to the top an example for packed bed bioreactor is a trickling bed reactor which is used in waste water treatment in a flocculated cell reactor the cells are suspended by allowing them to flocculate these type of reactors are used mainly in waste water treatment photo bioreactors or pbr are bioreactors which are specialized for fermentation that can be carried out either by exposing to sunlight or to artificial illumination so the cells growing in this type of fermenters need light energy 
for their growth. These types of fermenters are made up of glass or transparent plastic. The culture can be circulated through this type of fermenter through an array of tubes or flat panels. The cells should be continuously circulated so that there will not be any sediment formation which will block their growth. And this will allow the adequate penetration of sunlight into the fermenter. Generally, this type of bioreactor is used for the cultivation of microalgae and cyanobacteria. The membrane bioreactors are generally used for various microbial bioconversions or transformations. Here, an ultrafilter membrane will separate the fermenter into two compartments. In one compartment, a soluble enzyme or the microbial cells will be kept along with the substrate. Due to the microbial action or the enzyme action, the substrate will be converted to the product and once formed, the product will be forced through the membrane into the other compartment. Generally, polysulfonate, polyamide or cellulose acetate is used as the membrane material. This type of bioreactor, membrane bioreactor is used for the production of several products such as in alcoholic fermentation for the production of solvents, organic acids, etc. And also it is used in wastewater treatment. The next type of bioreactor is acetator and cavitator. These are generally used for the production of vinegar. Acetator operate in a semi-batch mode and cavitator works in a continuous mode. The difference between acetator and cavitator is in the mechanics of their operation. Aeration in acetator is by a rotating ceramic disc over an air nozzle which will produce finely dispersed air bubbles. While in cavitator, a nutrient liquid and air are sucked through a hollow tube which extends from the liquid surface. So there will be formation of air bubbles which will result in aeration. Fringes generator is an acetator used in the manufacture of vinegar. Cylindroconical vessels. These are generally used for brewing. Here the vessel consists of a stainless steel vertical tube having a hemispherical top and a conical bottom. In this vessel, the media will be inoculated with yeast and during fermentation, there will be generation of carbon dioxide bubbles. Proper mixing of contents within the fermenter will be achieved by the rapid rising of the carbon dioxide bubbles generated during fermentation. The Waldhof type bioreactor or fermenter is used for growing yeast on sulfite waste liquor. This type of fermenter is made of stainless steel having a central draught tube. The aeration is through a rotating pinwheel type aerator through which air will be introduced into the fermenter. The image shows the top view of such a aerator. In deep jet fermenter, there will be a gas entrainer through which the liquid medium will be circulated using a pump. Two basic types of entrainer are the injector and the ejector. In injector, a jet of medium will be surrounded by compressed air, while in ejector, the liquid jet enters into a larger nozzle and entrains the gas around it. In the cyclone column bioreactor, the culture fluid will be pumped from the bottom to the top of the fermenter from where it will descend down through the walls of the column in a relatively thin film. This is especially used for the cultivation of filamentous microorganisms. In this system, nutrients and air are fed through the base of the bottom of the column while exhaust gases will leave from the top of the column. 
rotating disc fermenter also known as rotating disc conductors are generally used in effluent treatment there will be several disc which are fitted onto a central drive shaft which are capable of slow rotation the microorganisms will be grown as thin microbial films on these discs on the surface of this disc while rotating slowly through the effluent 40 to 50 percentage of the disc disc surface will be submerged during this process the microorganisms which are present on the surface of this rotating disc can oxidize the nutrients present in the effluent generally the discs are made from the synthetic material generally polystyrene or pvc these three types of bioreactors the hollow fiber reactor microcarrier and perfusion culture is used for the cultivation of animal cells in hollow fiber reactors the cells are immobilized on the external surfaces of hollow fiber while nutrients will pass through the interior of the fibers this is used for the cultivation of anchorage dependent cells in microcarriers small beads of deae or dextran are used the cells anchorage dependent cells are grown on the surface of the microcarriers either in the form of monolayers or in the form of multilayers the perfusion culture is a technique where a gentle stirring is provided in the fermenter and the broth will be continuously withdrawn from the vessel and passed through a filter to separate the cells from the medium this type of culture is also known as spin culture since while filtering the filter will be gently spinned to prevent cell blocking so we discussed about various types and designs of fermenters these are the references thank you so much for listening